sort of redeemer do we need? Well, we need one who is truly human and truly God. Why do we need a redeemer who is truly human? Well, one reason is so that he can identify with us. The Bible says he was in all manner tempted like we are, yet he was without sin. And the reason he went through our experience is so that he understands what we go through. I mean, he is our high priest. He understands how we suffer. He understands the things that we go through. And in that way, I understand my God knows my life. He can identify with me. But even as he identified with me by going through a hard life, by being humiliated and going through humble circumstances and difficult circumstances, he did it with perfect obedience, not doubting the love of his father and not wavering from his father's path. That meant not only that he could identify with what we experience as humans, he could become the perfect substitute for humans such as you and I. Now, as a substitute, that means that in my sin, I'm separated from God. He's holy, I am not. And for God to be just and holy, He cannot identify with my sin. And so God had to provide a way for my sin to be put on another. He did that by having His Son come in human likeness, human form, but live perfectly so that He could be the substitute for my sin, that, that Jesus dying on the cross would be like me in the sense that He could understand what I go through and perfectly live the life I do and yet not sin, so that when He suffered the penalty willingly for my sin, it was a right, an adequate, a perfect substitute for my sin and for your sin. Jesus could identify with what we go through at the same time because He lived perfectly in obedience. He became the perfect substitute for my sin and for your sin as He took our sin upon Him on the cross. And because He took our sin upon Himself, having identified with us, when He rose from the grave and ascended to His Father, He becomes the perfect advocate for us. He knows exactly what we go through, our strengths and our weaknesses, what we need, so that He, as the one who was once human and still understands the entirety of our human experience, because He retains His man-like features and functions in His divine nature, then He understands all that we go through and all that we need. Because He's human, He can provide for our need. But He's also God. And what it means that Jesus was God, it means that He can accomplish the purposes for which He came. That even now He can rule our world in such a way that all God intends for our lives will happen. And when He was put to death because He was God, He could fully not only pay the sacrifice for our sin, pay the debt that we owed, He could rise from the grave. Death could not defeat Him. And because He was alive, because He was sovereign, because He was divine and rose to God, He continues to advocate for us, but more than advocate, to accomplish God's purposes in our lives. He is the God who accomplishes all that we need, even as, he's the, uh, he, even as He is the man who understands all that we need and provides all that we need. These two things come together in that perfect humanity and divinity, godliness of Christ. He is able to accomplish all that is necessary for our salvation by sympathizing with us and substituting for us and at the very same time in His divine nature accomplishing all He intended to take our sin away and then accomplish all that is needed for our lives now to not only walk with Him but ultimately be secure with Him forever. Jesus, perfect God, perfect man was the Redeemer that we needed and He accomplished all that was necessary by identifying with our humanity and doing what a God had to do to save us.